very useful uh, questions, especially the question B11 either, right? because it summarizes all the important uh, concepts on organic chemistry that you need to know. So I'm going to go through this with you in a while. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the section B. It says that the iron is made by reducing the hematite with coke and the limestone in the blast furnace. So I'm sure you know that this is the blast furnace application, which is used to extract the iron from the metal ore. And of course, it's not just used to extract iron in the normal <coughs> situation. We can also use this to extract the less reactive matter, such as the zinc <coughs> or lead, all right, from their metal ore uh, by using a blast furnace. So first of all, in part A, part A, you have to name the element and the compound. Naming the element and the compound that reacts to produce the carbon monoxide. Okay, that's required to reduce the hematite in the blast furnace. Okay, that is to reduce the hematite in the blast furnace. So, how do you think we should approach this question? Now, if they ask for the elements, can you see that the main ingredient that we're going to put into the blast furnace is actually the hematite, coke, and the limestone. And out of these three uh, substances, the coke is the only one that exists as element, right? Which is the carbon element. Yeah, so you got to mention the element as, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> as the carbon, all right? Now do not write it as coke because coke is actually a common name and it's one type of the, um, uh, carbon element. All right, so since they have specifically asked you for the element, you've got to uh, identify this as carbon. And then uh, what about the compound? So for the compound, out of this compound, you can see that the limestone and also the um, uh, uh, this um, hematite, they are compounds, right? Okay, so and the compound which reacts to produce the carbon monoxide. So what is that compound that reacts to produce the carbon monoxide? Remember the first two uh, reactions where we have the uh, carbon to react with oxygen, it will form the carbon dioxide, right? Okay, and then in the second reaction, the carbon dioxide reacts with more carbon or more coke to form the carbon monoxide. So to answer these questions on the compound, in fact, that should be carbon dioxide. You understand this part? Right, okay, so uh, let's run through the first two reaction, the first two reaction on the um, blast furnace application. So we have the carbon, all right, that is the coke that reacts with oxygen, O2, uh, to produce the carbon dioxide. Okay, so that is the step number one. So we continue to add in more coke. I continue to add in more coke to react with the carbon dioxide. Hmm. So that it will produce the carbon monoxide. Okay, you're going to balance the equation. All right, so now it's balanced. And the purpose of doing this, right, is to get the carbon monoxide, which is used, which is used as a reducing agent. All right, that has to be used as a reducing agent to extract the iron from the hematite. But why can't we introduce carbon monoxide straight into the blast furnace? It's because carbon monoxide is actually a very toxic gas. Right, so it's not easy to handle and then uh, it may even cause um, this um, air pollution to the surrounding if you were to directly introduce carbon monoxide into the uh, blast furnace. All right, so that's why we make the carbon monoxide within the blast furnace to minimize the environmental pollution. Right, and also minimize the risk since it is a dangerous gas. So you can see that the compound that reacts with this carbon element, which is the coke, is actually the carbon dioxide to produce the carbon monoxide so as to reduce the hematite in the blast furnace. 
Got that? Okay, so you may see that all these limestones and hematite, they are also compounds, but the question that specifically um, asks you for the compound that reacts to produce carbon monoxide, not to extract the iron. So that's why compound should be carbon dioxide. Any question for this? Okay, uh, all right, so let's move on. Okay, so for part B, we have to construct the chemical equation, including the state symbols for the reduction of the hematite by carbon monoxide. All right, so how do we construct this equation? including the state symbols. So very simple, we have the <coughs> three moles of the carbon monoxide, right, which is in a gaseous state, to react with one mole of the iron, three oxide, that is in a solid state. And then it produces two moles of the iron now remember the iron to be that is produced is in the molten state and therefore it is, should be a liquid. And then there are three moles of carbon dioxide, which is a gas. So this is a very important um, uh, equation that represents the extraction of the iron from the um, hematite in a blast furnace. So do remember this. Huh? Okay, and uh, what about part C? Explain why waste gas contains sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen. Now, first we know that the sulfur dioxide is produced is because in the coal, when we burn the coal for energy, this coal contains the sulfur. All right, so you're going to say that the sulfur, okay, the sulfur that's present in the ore, Right, which is the um, uh, ore that we have extracted from the ground, <clears throat> will react with oxygen, the furnace, to form sulfur dioxide. Okay, so that is one of the reasons why the Sulfur is present in salt, as in the sulfur dioxide will be formed when we burn this um uh this this ore. Okay, now what about the oxides of nitrogen? Ah, this is interesting. How come there's like nitrogen oxides or oxides of nitrogen? Any idea? See, would you like to give a try? Um, the nitrogen gas reacts with the oxygen. Yeah, and then what is the main reason for it to react with the uh, oxygen? Where does the nitrogen come from? Air. Yeah, it comes from the surrounding air, right? But what is the main reason for it to react with the oxygen? Now, you see, we don't get oxides of nitrogen uh, under normal situation in our atmosphere, right? Yeah, even though there are oxygen and uh, uh, nitrogen gases present in the atmosphere. But how come in this situation, there are oxides of nitrogen that is formed? Mm, very high temperature. That's right. Okay, so the high temperature is the uh, set of keywords that you need to mention on why oxides of nitrogen are produced in this application. Right, because if you just mentioned that it... It, it, it is due to the reaction between oxygen and nitrogen from the surrounding air, then how come we do not get this oxygen of nitrogen in our atmosphere? Yeah, so a few set of keywords to um, be used in answering these questions. So you're going to say that the high temperature, the yeah, high temperature in the furnace and that encourages the nitrogen and oxygen from the surrounding air to react to form oxides of nitrogen. Okay, got this? 
All right, so take note on these uh, questions. Let me shift this up. Okay, then part D. So the slag flows above the iron and is tapped for further use. Uh, and also the layer of the slag. If the layer of the slag was not present, there would be a lower yield of the <coughs> molten iron collected. So could you suggest a possible reason for this? Why is it that if the slag is not present? Now, first of all, how do we get slag? We get slag is because we have added the limestone, right? Yeah, so when the limestone is added into the furnace, it will be uh, decomposed into the calcium oxide and the carbon dioxide. And then the calcium oxide is the one that reacts with the acidic impurities, mainly the sand, to form the slag. All right, but if, let's say we don't add the limestone, here we don't add a limestone, then we will not be able to get the slag. So that means the layer of slag is not present. But how come when the layer of slag is not present, there will be a lower yield of the molten iron being collected? <coughs> Tianyu, would you like to give a try? Uh, not as pure. Not that pure? Ah, almost there. Very good. You can't get pure iron. So, what will happen to the iron? What do you mean by not pure iron? Wang Xi, any idea? Now, in fact, this layer of slag can be act as a protective layer to prevent or at least minimize the pure iron that is uh, extracted from oxidation from the surrounding air. You understand? All right, so the iron, <coughs> the iron, or in fact, you can add in the word pure. The pure iron extracted will be oxidized. Okay, will be oxidized by the oxygen from the air to form, uh, what will happen after it's been oxidized by the oxygen from the air, it will then form back the uh, iron three oxide, which is the rust, right, to form the iron three oxide <coughs> again. <coughs> so this will definitely reduce the U of the molten iron. All right? Okay, so probably another reason why we add the limestone is also because of this. All right, we add the limestone, well, we can get the slag as a useful product for road construction. But another advantage of this is that by adding the limestone, it forms slag on top of the iron, uh, the molten iron, and this slag can actually uh, prevent the oxidation of the pure iron to form back the iron three oxide. So this will definitely increase the yield of the product. Okay, so take note on this. And lastly for part E is pretty simple. Let me highlight the uh, question number. So that's part D. And this is part C. Huh? Okay, so what about part E? Part one. So one use of an alloy of iron. So we can see that the um, alloy of iron is used in construction of buildings. Okay, or you can also talk about the use of the alloys as um, making medical instruments. <coughs> okay, making the medical instruments. All right, so there are many other uh, answers, but these are the, the few answers that you can use. Okay, then what about part two? So one reason why pure iron is not suitable for the use name above, well, because we know that the pure iron is very soft. 
KPL ion is very soft due to the regular arrangement of the ion atoms, which will slide across one another easily. All right, so this, are the, uh, this is the reason. We can also talk about iron uh, being uh, very susceptible to uh, rusting. That is also acceptable. So far okay, Ken? I'm going to clear my throat a little bit. What I had for dinner last evening, I actually tried the uh, Pizza Hut Laksa Licious Pizza. It is really, really very good. Have you all tried that? Ah, you can get one um, and share with your family because they're having a promotion now, 50% off. And I think it's quite worth it. I got two big uh, pizza and that is uh, 35 for two large ones. And we can't finish as a family of, uh, of six of us. So I think it's really worth the money. And it's really very delicious. I mean, if you love, if you if you like to uh, eat laksa, you like the laksa taste. I think it has done a very good job in making the pizza. Yeah, I fell in love with it immediately. I I ate it. Yeah. Like after after eating the spicy food, uh, ah, the throat will get a little sensitive. Okay, so enjoy your this uh, month of uh, school term, uh, because you have. Oh, do you have alternate weeks? Don't have, right? For the sec four. Ah, okay, okay. But you have early dismissal, la. no extra lessons, right? Not really. Look at your face. What is early dismissal? <laughs> so what time do you usually go back? Like for the first for, for the past one week, it was well, two plus three. Chi yourself? Around two. Oh two. Okay. And what about Tian Yu? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, so about the same, still the same as previous uh, schedule. Huh? Okay, so anyway, let's carry on. Can I clear all the writings here? Can, okay. All right, now question 11. Yes, now question 11, I will need to uh, do some drawings on the white paper. Um, but before that, I'm sure you have. Uh, you may need to take some time to look through the flow chart, so then so that I can guide you through the uh, concepts for this. <coughs> All right, so you can see that in this flow chart, we have um, a number of reactions, which the uh, compound Q has undergone, and uh, you can see for the part one, uh, okay, the first reaction. This compound Q reacted with the ethanol in the presence of the concentrated sulfuric acid and it undergoes the heating to produce a fruity smell. Now, by reading all these conditions, right, what does it remind you of? Reminds you of the esterification, right? Yeah, because in making esters, we can use the alcohol, in this case it's the ethanol, to react with the carboxylic acid functional group from the compound Q in the presence of the con sulfuric acid, which is used as a catalyst, right? And we need to do heating for the esterification reaction to take place. And it produces the ester, which is a fruity uh, uh, smell compound, right? Esters are very um, sweet smelling compounds. So that is esterification. Now two, we are not sure about the, um, anyway, two is not even here. It's actually mentioned in a question somewhere here. All right, so we shall skip that. But what about three? Now for three, in the presence of the UV light, we react compound Q with the chlorine. Shows that this is actually a substitution reaction, right? Meaning that only the alkane, the alkane functional group in this compound Q, can undergo this reaction. Okay, then four erected with the metal magnesium. So what does it remind you of? Metal reactions with the carboxylic acid functional group. Okay, because metal and acid can react to form a salt and the hydrogen gas. 
And lastly, you have this polymer. Okay, so I'm going to use these questions to highlight to you on the concepts of polymers. All right, the polymerization. Okay, so that is a summary of all these uh, reactions with the compound Q in part A, B, 11, part A. How do we draw the structural formula or the formula of the compound, organic compound that's formed in the reaction one? And that is this, esterification. <coughs> and because they want you to draw the structural formula, they didn't ask you to draw the full structural formula. So in some parts of the molecule, you can summarize it into a chemical formula. Okay, let me switch the screen now. So you're going to keep in mind that to make an ester, only the alcohol functional group and the carboxylic acid functional group can react. Okay, in the presence of the uh, catalyst of this uh, sulfuric acid. So let me write down the structure for Q first. In the meantime, you can also give it a try and see whether you can derive the structure of the ester. Okay, so everything is written correctly. Now this is compound Q. Now what is shown here is actually a full structural formula where all these covalent bonds are shown in the whole molecule. Even the functional group of the COH, instead of writing it as C, instead of writing it as C, okay, let's see. So instead of writing it as a group of atoms, COH, they actually break it up and show all the covalent bonds between the C, between the uh, atoms. All right, so this type of representation is known as the full structural formula. Okay, the full structural formula. So since esterification is being carried out, you agree that it's only this part of the molecule, which is the carboxylic acid, that will react with the ethanol. All right, so how would you summarize this? Now, can you see that this part of the molecule has a total of five carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five. How many hydrogens are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can summarize this group of atoms as C5H9. Okay, C5H9. And then this part of the molecule, remember what is the rule of drawing the esters? We said that in making esters, we must remove the OH from the acid functional group and then the H from the alcohol. Okay, let's draw the alcohol first. Alcohol is the ethanol that is C2H5OH. See this? All right, so I'm gonna remove the OH from the acid and the H from the alcohol. So what will be my final product? How, do the, uh, how does the final uh, structural formula looks like? So I have summarized this into C5H9. I can write it as C5H9. Okay, and then this is the C double bond O. I didn't do anything to the C double bond O, but I got to remove this OH and merge it with this part of the alcohol, the ethanol. So I have this as C2H5. You understand? Okay, so remember when you are drawing an esters, you have to take out the OH from the carboxylic acid functional group and the H from the alcohol. Okay, so that forms the water. Water is the byproduct, the side product, not important. Okay, the important one is the ester. But in drawing the structural formula, it's very important to show the ester functional group you see, I've actually expanded the um, uh, structural formula of this ester functional group by showing all the bonds here. Now, alternatively, if you want to show all the bonds in the esters, you can also do that for these questions. All right? So that is the answer for 
part A. By the way, this is ethanol. That's what uh, given in the question. Okay, so what about part two? Reaction two converts the carbon-carbon double bond into the single bond through the addition of the hydrogen. And you're going to state down the necessary conditions. So for part two, we know that, let me change back the question. 